Hey everyone, HHO for all. It's been a while since I put up a video and I had a couple people asking me to throw up a video on how to build my volcano fuel cell. Um, there's been a few changes on the volcano fuel cell. Um, the, uh, the old design worked and it worked okay but it wasn't very efficient because uh, it had a single hole in the center of each plate and the water couldn't refill fast enough and the gas couldn't get out fast enough so it, it caused kind of a, a burping farting sound as the gas was coming in and out and it's, it's pretty funny to hear in person but um, it's definitely not efficient so I decided on the plates that I was actually going to drill out larger holes and do two holes on each plate so that way there's less restrictions for the water refill and also for the gas exhaust. Um, this is what I'm dealing with now. These are the uh, new plates. They're 316L stainless. And I've actually I've cut out tabs here on the negative plates. And then also on the positive plates, I have it over here. Just so that way they're on opposite sides. Less chance of um, any... Uh, any issues with the positive or negative leads being too close because I've had that issue on on some previous designs and it's just easier to keep it organized if the connections are on opposite sides so this is the basic design It's a 3 by 3 and then uh, the neutrals obviously don't have any tabs on them but this is how they look and then the positive has a tab on the right. There's a total of 13 plates. And the configuration is negative, then five neutrals, positive in the center, then five more neutrals, and then a negative at the bottom. And to connect to the tabs that I have there, I'm just using these regular connectors, little slip-on connectors, and um, then I'm also using a vinyl coated galvanized steel cable. I've used, uh, I've used the stainless cable also and I've tested the resistance on both of them and I, to be honest I can't tell the difference so I'm just going to use the galvanized cable because you know it's only like 35 40 cents a foot as compared to a dollar a foot for stainless steel so uh, you can buy this stuff over at Home Depot um, they either call it vinyl coated galvanized steel cable or dog runs I know that sounds pretty disgusting but I guess people use it for uh, you know if you're a dog owner you use it for keeping them on a leash in the backyard so they don't run away or dig under a fence or whatever so anyway dog runs and the gaskets here, um, I'm using a really thick material. It's kind of like a, a rubber material. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I had a friend that gave me the material because he had a bunch of leftover stuff from building his own cells. And he didn't need it, so he gave it to me. Um, it's one eighth thick, and I'm hoping this is going to work really well in between these plates. I don't want to do one sixteenth because I've used shower pan liner before and uh, at the 1 16th thick it's just the plates are too close they get too hot and hopefully with it a little bit further apart um, should get better results out of that so oh um, there's also one more advancement that I have here not really an advancement but another idea um, this is a garden hose quick disconnect and I saw this over at Home Depot they come in a two-pack um, just like this and I thought you know if, if I can connect one of these on the fuel cell and then one on the bubbler then that way anytime that I'm doing any testing or I have to do any maintenance any cleanup all I have to do is just pop the thing off and I don't have to worry about stretching out my hoses or 
you know, messing up any seals that I had. So it's a new idea. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I'm going to test it out on this design. Uh, the model number for those is 237337. And um, the great thing is, is this uh, little hose barb screws right in there don't have any problem with that at all the um, model number for the hose barb it's a Watts A388 and I don't know if you can read that or not uh, keep this thing straight uh, nylon barb to MIP adapter and it's a half inch by three quarter so I'm going to do a real quick mock up here. I haven't drilled out the holes on my Lexan plates. I haven't drilled them out. So it's just going to be kind of a walk through. Um, still have to drill those out. And that's, uh, that's a whole nother project. So uh, here we go. I'm going to put this thing together and uh, hopefully you guys can follow along and see how I've put this thing together and maybe replicate it for yourself so uh, you start out with a gasket on the Lexan because you need a good seal in between the plate you wouldn't just lay a plate on top of the Lexan so it's real simple you just put a plate down put a gasket put another gasket put a plate and you just keep doing this process until you have the whole thing assembled which isn't really all that hard to do and just keep in mind that this is just for demonstration purposes that's why my plates are not lined up neatly I'm just doing this real quick and dirty just to show the basic idea of how this is assembled and just straighten that up a little bit here okay and then connect on the connectors I'll just connect up one just so you get the basic idea and then that goes on top And then, of course, in the very center, I'm going to have this drilled out so that I can connect in my quick disconnect. And so this is what it's going to look like when it's all done. And like I said, hopefully later on I'll be able to build one with a lot more plates. And you can increase the output just by building it higher. So... You know, there's no reason at all to make this huge monster fuel cell. There's just really no reason for it. I don't understand why people use the 12 by 12 plates. You know, where are you going to put that thing? In your trunk? You know, come on. That doesn't make any sense. You know, it makes sense to make something small that you might be able to actually put under the hood. And I think when this thing is all together and I've got a good working model... This one's probably going to go under the hood. So, that's that. This has been HHO for all. And uh, this was just a quick walkthrough on the Volcano Cell. If you have any questions or comments, you know how to get me. Have a good one.